Hi guys. Well, you wanted to work on some of those turtle clay rattles that we looked at. So today, let's see how we're going to make those. You're going to get a piece of clay today. You'll want to divide that into two pieces of clay. And we're going to start by doing kind of a pinch pot for one side of the shell. So you're going to roll that ball out between your hands, or you can roll it out on your desk. I notice when I roll mine on my desk, though, it gets a little side lopsided, so I like to do it in my hand. And poke that thumb inside of there and we're going to start gently pinching around the edges. And we have to remember, we don't want this to be more of a cup so much as we want it to be a shell for our turtle. So you want to be able to smooth out, I use a little bit of water on my thumb, to pull and work this out so that it gets more of a turtle shell shape to it. Now, you can leave, your, leave it lumpy and bumpy if you want for your turtle shell. Or, again, get a little bit of water, not a lot, just a little bit to make it a little slippery, and you can smooth out that side of the shell. I don't mind leaving some of the natural bumps and cracks in there. It makes it look more natural. So that's one side of my turtle shell that I've done. I'm going to take that other piece that I had and roll it, stick my thumb in there, and start pinching it outward for the other side of my turtle shell. Now it's important that both of these balls of clay were about the same size because we want our turtle shells to match up and be the same size. this one wider, but I still keep it a little bit bowl shape, a little bit cup shape. And about the same thickness all the way through, all the way in the middle and to the edges. I'm going to check and see if they match up. They pretty much match up. So now what I can do for my turtle shell is I can start designing it. I can take a toothpick, I can kind of look at the patterns that I wanted in it before. When we are working in our sketchbooks, and I can start adding some of those. If I don't want them to be really sharp like this, I can use some of our other carving tools that we have. And this might just take a little bit of practice if you have a spare piece of clay. And these ones carve a little different. And I want to remove that spare clay. It's not just going to disappear when it fires. You have to actually smooth it out or take off those little chunks that come out when you're carving. So keep that in mind. The other thing that you can do with these instead of carving is you can put your finger behind it, make sure it's underneath and holding it, and you can push into the clay to kind of draw them. As you notice, they come out a little bit more geometrical, not as natural, so I like to go back in and curve off the corners, a little bit more like this, make them rounded. And you can see where the toothpick was, how that one's not quite as natural looking. So I'm going to go back on top of my toothpick line and carve out some more of that clay. So it's a bit more natural looking. Again, don't let it stay on there. Whatever you're carving out, you have to get rid of. I'm just wiping mine on the towel. might want to smooth some of those edges a little. They're getting kind of overly rough. And this is how you guys are going to work on it. Then the other thing you can do after you have your major ones in is you can go back in and you could add some little textures to them by just gently pushing in with some of the different tools. Because as we saw when we looked at turtle shells, they're not all flat and smooth. They have a little bit of texture to them here and there, and they're kind of bumpy. And if around the edges you want to do a pattern, you can also do that. This is really kind of up to your imagination and how you want to try out some of the different tools at this portion. Remembering, of course, we don't want to work too slow because you have this other piece of clay that we need to get to before the end of class so that it doesn't dry out. And we have to fit these two together. So there's my first shell. I'm going to set it over here to the side. And then I have what's going to be the bottom part of my shell. And we saw those were a lot smoother. They weren't quite as fancy as the top portion of the shell. So for this one, I'm just going to do some of those belly lines that they had on the turtles. 
Again, I gotta remove this extra stuff. I don't want it to stay on there. Be careful when you're doing this that you don't poke it through to the back. We don't want to lose our beads when we put them in there in a little bit. And the same thing around the edges. This one, do a little pattern. And I might have to go back and redo this pattern a little bit when I stick my two shells together. Kind of like that. Now, to make the beads that go inside, you just need some of the scrap clay. And what you're going to do is you're going to roll teeny tiny little balls that go in there and like the size of a pea that you would eat. That's all the bigger you want it. If they get any bigger than that, it won't rattle as nicely. And you need about, oh, I don't know, probably eight or 10 of these. So I have two, three, four, five, that one got a little big, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. Now we haven't scored and slipped these, and here's the secret. You take a piece of paper towel and you very gently put these in the paper towel. Remember how I said anything you put into a kiln gets heated to like lava hot? It will disintegrate this paper towel, even though it's going to be inside your turtle, but it will keep these from sticking to the inside of your turtle while it's firing. And they won't stick to each other. Just don't squish it. Keep it nice and light. And we're going to put those inside here. Now, when I score and slip this, we're going to score around the edge. That means I have to make a bunch of little lines like that, because this is going to work like a zipper. I'm going to make a bunch of little lines on the other side, and when you get it wet with the water, it becomes slippery. So this is the scoring part. Adding the water makes it slippery. That's the slip part, so scoring and slipping. And that's going to help those edges seal together so they don't come apart in the kiln. As clay dries, it gets a little bit smaller. It shrinks, and if you don't have these pieces zippered together, it'll just break and it won't stick together, you won't have a rattle, you'll just have two pieces of shell like we do right now, and you'll be very upset. So then I get a little bit of water on my fingers, not a lot, get that edge just a little wet. We want it a little slippery, but we don't want it dripping. Dripping is too much water, and then you'll have the same problem where it won't stick together, it'll just fill in those little holes. Okay, I'm gonna take my packet and gently place it in the middle of my shell, like that. See the top of my shell, and this is the bottom of my shell. Now, I don't want to seal this up yet because we have to be able to put a stick in there, right? So I brought my paintbrush over. I didn't bring my stick today, so I have to use a paintbrush instead for now. I'm going to put that up in there so it's the same thickness of what my stick will be. Then I'm going to very gently start pinching around the edges of my shell. Now, we're not trapping air in here because I have to take the stick out before it goes in the kiln. If we put your sticks in the kiln, they'll become firewood. You won't see them again. Um, so you will have a hole in here for the air to escape. You don't have to worry about that. We're not trapping air completely in here. Okay. Remember how before I said it was going to take out my little pattern? So if I want my little pattern back, I'll have to go back in get some of this out of my way with my little tool to put my pattern back around the edge of that shell. You don't want to cut through it. I have to be very careful, and I don't want it to be too thin because then it becomes brittle and it'll break. don't want it to break. I go all the way around the edge of that shell, put my pattern back in that I liked. There we go. Check the front, check the back. If I don't have my initials somewhere, I'm going to do those really tiny now so that we know whose it is later. Some of them might look the same. They're all gorgeous. All right, and there's my initials. Then I'm going to carefully pull out the stick so that it leaves that hole down in there. And we're going to put it on the drying rack to dry before it gets fired.